Welcome to my talk on the present value of an annuity. Now, um, these uh, sorts of ideas make use of the concept of regular withdrawals. So, let's say you have a large sum of money that you wish to take regular withdrawals from, um, and, and of course it's going to deplete. And when we mean by regular withdrawals, it's a withdraw it's regular and withdrawal if it is the same amount of money for each withdrawal and also over the same time period so maybe these withdrawals are happening for example once a month and it's always the same amount of money for example so the present value of an annuity is the amount of money needed to finance a series of withdrawals so in other words right now if you're saving up to 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 set up this fund that you're going to be withdrawing from um, how much money do you need to put into that fund to be able to make such withdrawals and that's what present value is concerned with in this context so here we have PV for present value is equal to the future value divided by 1 plus the interest rate divided by the number of compounding periods per year to the power of the number of compounding periods per year times the time in years. And we can also um, use negative exponents to write the present value in this other way. Okay, so that's present value of an annuity. And let's now go into some, uh, some detail. So the present value of each withdrawal. So in this context, both present and future values refer to the same withdrawal amount. So future value, let's say we're withdrawing $1,000 as in this problem. Well, the $1,000 would go here for the future value, but would the present value be $1,000? Well, probably not because you're gonna have a division by this figure down here. And that figure is going to change because n is going to change as time increases. So, um, so as a result, we have the following. But taking into uh, taking into consideration the fact that this money is going to stay in the bank, the reason this this stuff changes, reason present value changes, is because present value concerns the money that has to be available right now which won't be all of the one thousand dollars because um, while that money is in the bank during the years that the withdrawals are made the remainder of what's left over of the money is still gaining interest so uh, that's why the present value is usually a fair bit less than the future value depending on the length of time sometimes they're nearly equal like here's now so a month from now, $1,000 will still be worth almost $1,000 because not much time has passed. But by the time we come to the end here, um, the uh, amount of money left over, or the amount of money that becomes $1,000 will be more significant. Now, as you can see here, this present value and this future value relate to a withdrawal amount in the space of one month. But there's another present value and another future value which has to do with the total amount, the aggregate total amount that has to be in the bank. And that will be when we work all these out as the sum of all of these terms for every single month that you calculate. So for the first month we have a thousand for the first month divided by one plus, I don't know what I is, maybe we can write it as a decimal. What's one plus? We're earning 4% interest and it's earning a monthly interest. So, because it's a simple annuity. So 0.04 divided by 12 gives us 0 0.0033, 0 0.3 of a percent. So 1.0033, and that's to the power 1. In fact, I don't need a decimal there. Uh, I can just write the numbers out, and that way it'll be maybe, hopefully, a little easier to read. 1,000 
divided by 1.0033. And looks good. And that's the first month. So I skipped over the four because I was kind of afraid of the fact that I'm you know, almost at the end of my board. So the idea is that the other present value, which is the present value that answers the question, the present value is the sum of all the terms in this series. We'd have to add up all of these numbers in order to get the present value that answers the question, how much money should be in the bank for me to withdraw $1,000 for the next 10 years, given a 4% interest rate um, mentioned over here. So that's, that's basically the setup using a timeline. And it's clear now that we have to add up all of these numbers to get our present value. Now, of course, there's another way to do it. There is a short way uh, that takes into account all of these uh, all of these terms so let us recall that the sum of n terms in a series is uh, in fact for a geometric series is a multiplied by r to the n subtract 1 divided by r minus 1 so that's that's where we got to start off with Okay, so we do this thing as before. We have uh, basically our series which we took from our timeline. And you can arguably say that it's 1 plus the interest rate compounded monthly in the denom denominator divided into 1,000. And we start off with an exponent of 1, then an exponent of 2, then an exponent of 3, all these exponents in the denominator. So 1 plus 0 0.0033 could be also written as 1.0033 squared, 1.0033 cubed, all divided into 1,000, your regular payments, or your regular withdrawals, and you, um, you know, go on and on for 120 terms. So now, to see uh, the basic formula, because of course this takes a long time to compute, so if you multiply both sides by 1.0033, what happens is that this term, 1.0033 to the power 1 divides out in the multiplication, and your first term, uh, this term here, turns into 1,000. And then this term here loses its power of 2 and becomes a power of 1. This goes from a power of 3 to a power of 2, just because of multiplying both sides by that. And the and it goes on and on and on for 120 terms until we get to the last term. And the 120 exponent becomes 119. And there is no term with 120 exponent when we uh, multiply both sides by 1.0033. So then, <coughs> let's say that we take this minus this. So we do what we did before. We take this minus this. And it's 1.0033 SN minus SN, which really means that you factor out SN and you get 1.0033 minus 1, which is really just I. This is really just the interest rate um, per compounding period, or in, in our case, per month. And uh, this becomes, well, what are the unique terms? We're subtracting this from this, so 1,000 minus 0 is just 1,000. And then we subtract, notice all these terms subtract out because they're the same. These are all the same. So 119, somewhere in this region, is also 1,000 divided by 1.033 to the power 119. But then the last unique term, we have nothing here. So it becomes 0 minus 1,000 divided by 1.0033 to the power 120. So this is what we end up with. Really, the first term minus the last term. And we can divide both sides by 1.0033 minus 1 um, to get S SN, but SN really becomes our present value, right? SN is really our present value, 
and um, so we get a thousand take away well I'm gonna write it out in one line because I don't want to clash with the line above so it's gonna be 1000 minus 1000 times 1.0033 repeating to the power of 100 uh, to the power of negative 120 sorry to the power of negative 120 and this is divided by this 1.0033 minus 1 well we might as well just subtract that so that becomes 0 0.0033 over here so 0. 0.0033 repeating <coughs> okay so all right that's our present value and notice that a thousand can be factored out and so we can go like this um, a thousand outside of one minus well 1.0033 remember I'm gonna do this kind of longhand one plus the interest rate compounded per month so 0 0.0033 repeating to the power of negative 120 okay that's outside the bracket because we factored out the thousand and divided by 0 0.0033 repeating so let's see if we can make our formula out of this so present value is really the regular payment 1000 times 1 minus 1 plus the interest rate to the power of negative well this is just the the number of payments or the number of withdrawals in our case so it's minus n all over well this is the interest rate compounded per month and so we have the present value of an annuity given to be this and of course that's what's in your textbook Um, I want to make it clear uh, what generates this fraction actually 1.0033 repeating because um, that's kind of interesting it basically this number is just 1 over 300 and I just know that from previous experience with the calculation so um, can we just store that as a constant so storing as a constant means I press the store button over here on my calculator most calculators have a store button and then you choose you choose a, a variable I'll just X is the easiest thing to choose for for this calculator otherwise you keep pressing the button to choose different variables let's just leave it as X and now we can just do 1000 times 1 minus 1 plus X okay so that's kind of the way, I, the way I'm going to do this just to show you um, the entry um, of the numbers into this calculator but you could you could do the fraction or you could do a bunch of three 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 threes I just prefer to make this as accurate as possible one minus and in brackets one plus X right so uh, and this is raised to the power of negative 120 so I raise it to the power of minus 120 okay and then I close my bracket okay and that's the top that's the whole numerator and now I go down to the bottom and now I enter well this is just going to be my x right one, 1 over 300 so this is just going to be my x over here that's just 1 over 300 and x is 1 over 300 up here just the way it is and when I press equals I get ninety eight thousand seven hundred and seventy dollars and 17 cents so let's just write that in as as what we arrived at so this is going to be ninety eight thousand seven hundred and seventy dollars and seventeen cents so what's this number remember this is this is our present value so this is the amount that we have to invest so that a month later we can make our first regular withdrawal of a thousand dollars and to do that over and over again over the next ten years 
So this is, must, this is what we must be able to put in first. Now if you think about the aggregate amount of money withdrawn, that's $120,000 because it's 120 months and that's 120 withdrawals of 1,000 for $120,000. So you can see there's a significant amount of interest ga gathered up on top of this money. In fact, it's interesting to just figure out if we take 120,000 and we take away this number here, and I'll just copy it down because I can do that on this calculator. My investment over the 10 year period would have gathered $21,000 in interest, which is quite a significant amount. And remember, this is only at 4% interest. These are our regular with draws. And remember, that was given the variable R in the textbook. Oh, uh, we didn't want that. That's kind of weird. Okay, let's get get rid of that R all right and uh, that was going to be a thousand that was a thousand dollars the interest remember is going to be four percent over 12 months so this is interest um, I guess I guess monthly interest Okay, and that was given as I in the textbook, if you recall. Okay, so um, then there was, uh, let's see, there's probably not a whole lot else uh, belonging to the formula, except that, um, of course, one was always added to the monthly interest. So let's set up, let's set up the number of months and we can go from 1 to 120 and I'll just get lazy here and you can see that the spreadsheet automatically just uh, if you enter the first few numbers it'll automatically figure out what other numbers you need <coughs> I'm going down to 120 so I think that's it so um, that's that's that those are my months and over here I'm going to use these months as, a, as an exponent on my interest when I divide. Now in this case I'm actually calculating each and every term one at a time and because it's a spreadsheet I can do that. So this becomes my this becomes my um, regular payment divided by uh, in brackets 1 plus the monthly interest Notice these dollar signs. These dollar signs actually fix um, fix the cells on these individual two cells here, so that when I go down the spreadsheet, it doesn't. I'm prevent the dollar signs prevent the um, prevent the variables from updating themselves. And if you forget to do that you'll see the reason for the mistake and you will put the dollar signs in because you won't have much of a choice. Well the exponent we should use is right here and I don't put dollar signs in this one that stays the way it is and yes that is correct so it should be just under a thousand and and there you go so that that's the formula A1 is the one thousand dollars you put the one thousand dollars here this is 1 plus 0 0.003333 repeating forever. And this is to the power of the first cell here. Oops, here, let's just get that out of there. And that's the number we should have. Now, because we have all these numbers going down to 120, I can just double click on this little, little solid square on the bottom, le uh, bottom right hand corner of cell F1. And when I double click, the whole thing automatically fills in. And does it fill in with the right thing? Well, if I click on a random square, uh, 7 should be the exponent, which is located in cell E7. And as you can see, cell E7 is actually, f Excel actually figured out that that should be cell E7. It certainly saves you from typing this in 120 times. Um, and notice, by the time we get to the end, 
this last deposit had 10 years to mature so it only needs to be six hundred and seventy dollars which is rather amazing well what's the sum of this what's the sum of this whole series and you can figure this out directly from the spreadsheet by entering equal sign sum anytime you need a, a formula you have to enter the equal sign and because everything is under F it's F colon F and as long as there's no other content in column F other than these exact uh, numbers that apply to the uh, regular regular withdrawals, you should get uh, you should get what I get. Now um, let's just widen this just slightly, and notice I do get ninety-eight thousand seven hundred seventy dollars. This seems to round to eighteen cents. I'm not sure why it's rounding the other way. Uh, if you recall, I got 17 cents exactly. It rounded down to 17 cents. It's almost identical to what we got using the shortcut formula. So as you can see, this is one use for a spreadsheet. As a matter of fact, if you want to label the spreadsheet, you can uh, put headers here. But in order to put headers here, you got to box everything out, select the whole thing, and move everything down by one square or by one entry and this will be your uh, um, compounding periods and this is the this is the amount invested this of course is the um, this is actually the present value okay that's the present value, that's the amount that you have to invest right at the beginning one month prior to beginning your withdrawals at 4% interest. 4% uh, interest, remember to make the dis distinction, 4% interest compounded annually and when you work it out monthly you have to divide by 12, that's why we get 0 0.30033 repeating. Okay, so that's, uh, that's how you get this on a spreadsheet.